Hi, folks. This is Rick Doc Walker, the DOC. This is John Kime, and you're listening to the Mess Hall with Rally Captain and Tailgate Ted. What's going on, Rally? How you been, man? Yo, Ted. Oh, man. After a much needed break, I am ready to wrap my head around all this new news that we've received in the off season. The question is, how have you been? I'm good, man. It's actually our last episode, for those that were wondering, was uh, what, February 8th? We were talking about Coach Rivera going to play golf, and you were saying he needed that mental break maybe from everything going on. And I think this past week was kind of good. I'm not gonna speak for you, but it was definitely good for me to step away from some of the commander news, even though I was still you know, checked into it and still watching it. Oh yeah. I figured I'd get caught up on some uh, Washington Capitals drama. So, you know, I'll touch base on where I went on my trip, but man, I'm looking now forward to uh, getting back into it. Just, I've been here cutting up clips from the Eric B press conference. Mm -hmm. For those wondering it's Thursday, the 23rd. We wanted to wait until today to record because we wanted to get a reaction rallies and mine off of B presser. So we're going to hit that with you all today, but it feels damn good to talk to you again, man. I missed you. Hey, brother. It's that, it's that bro code, that bro love. You know what I mean? That man love. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I miss you too, jealous. man. <laughs> jealous on your vacation. Mine was a little hectic. I drove down to Raleigh for the Caps game. I went to the stadium series game with Mrs. Tailgate. And I uh, basically convinced her that we should spend our sixth wedding anniversary in Raleigh. And she wasn't happy about it, but my rationale was I've been to all these outdoor stadium games. And for those that don't follow hockey, because we're kind of a commander's podcast, it's where they play the NHL games outdoors, full okay. ice rink and everything. So I've been to all of them and we were undefeated. So three, and zero on all those games, I've been to all of them. The caps have lost four games in a row. So I'm thinking I'm going to show up. I'm going to help them out, bring some of the good mojo. Riding off that Cowboys win with Sam Howe. Uh, yeah, it didn't exactly work out that way. We got our butts whooped four to one, and it was a seven-hour car ride home that was pretty painful. So, did, yeah. Did you at least stop in Richmond to get some barbecue? Wrong sound my effect. Man. Nope. My man. You, is that, is that, oh, oh, you got me all hyped. You got nah, me. Man. Shame on you, bro. They were closed. I called ZZQ because we came back on Tuesday. We were coming back, right? Okay. Called ZZQ. Okay. They were closed because of the holiday. So I was bummed, man. I didn't get a chance, but I did get a chance to go to Angus Barn. My man, JP Finley, recommended it. Place was amazing. Okay. That's was in Richmond? A, uh, no, this was in uh, Raleigh. Just really? Okay. Massive, like, 20-ounce ribeye mm. with a, uh, what was it, a lobster tail on top. 60 bucks, wow. man. Sixty dollars. Wow. Yeah, I mean, a bottle of wine down there was thirty-five dollars for like a nice bottle of wine. So that's one thing I love about leaving DC. You save money when you go on vacation for the most part. Definitely, definitely. Man, so, so that was than, your that was your victory steak then from Sam Howe beating the Cowboys. It was a uh, anniversary steak <laughs> that I turned into a victory <laughs> steak. That the wife, I still owe her a nice anniversary dinner because that was definitely. Uh, not the place for, but it was good. I never actually been to Raleigh. It was good to be out there with a bunch of Caps fans getting to tailgate for a hockey game. Mm -hmm. I mean, something like that. Never thought I'd be able to do. And just getting a chance to watch the boys play outdoors. It's more about the, like the pomp and circumstance, like the environment versus the actual game itself. If anybody ever gets a chance to go to one, I'll put some pictures on the YouTube so people can see it. It's, it's definitely a fun affair. It's not like your typical hockey game. Okay. With it being outside, yeah, I can I can imagine. It was actually pretty warm too, so it wasn't too too bad. I uh there was a one year, I think it was 2018, 2019, something like that. And uh I was flying my drone and we were playing the Cowboys in, in Dallas and I was flying my drone and they were getting ready for the uh outdoor hockey game. I don't remember who it was back then, yeah. but I thought it was pretty cool seeing them getting the ice rink set up. I was flying my drone and, and I saw them getting the ice rink set up and out outdoors. And we know that that Texas is is hot. 
Yeah. So the fact that they were able to 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 keep the ice cold for those guys escaped amazes me. Yeah, me too, man. I mean, it's I went to the one years ago. It was basically, I think, my first New Year's Eve with Mrs. Tailgate, and I dragged her to Pittsburgh. This is a Florida girl I'm taking to Pittsburgh on New Year's. She, Bless you, Miss Tailgate. A, yeah, there's a theme here. She wasn't happy about that one either, but she stuck around for it. And it was actually so warm that they had to move the game from a 3.30 to an 8 o'clock. Wow. So, And then yeah. after that, we were supposed to drive home because the Redskins played the Giants on our last home game of the season. Mm -hmm. But because they moved it tonight, we ended up getting a hotel well, I canceled the hotel, said, screw it. We're driving straight. I'm not missing the tailgate. I'm not missing the game the next day. <laughs> and she's passed out in the car and I'm smacking myself in the face trying to stay awake because it was my choice to just drive straight after the hockey game, not hers. It's like, I'm not missing the, the commander's game or the Redskins game back then. And yeah, speaking yeah. of which, I just renewed my season tickets, man. Finalized well, it today. Well, I got to tell you, bro, you know, the enemy is the only one that has everybody fired up. It's got me fired up, too. And go ahead and hit the buzzer because so did I, my man. <laughs> I was wondering when you were going to pull that trigger because it's a uh, relocation day on Saturday. And I'm yep. not moving seats. I'm good where I am. But nah, that's when happen. they throw everything back in the pot. So I didn't know what you were doing yet. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's the whole purpose of having this podcast, brother. So, <laughs> so people can know that, that hey, I decided to go ahead and, you know, be enemy fired me up, man. And so I, I had to do what I had to do. And, and here we are. So uh, I actually asked my rep, I said, hey, listen, you know, are the seats to the left of me available? Two seats to the left of me available? And he goes, oh, let me check. He goes, no, why? And I said, well, because they never come to the games. And he goes, really? I said, yeah, they never come to the games. They're certainly ticket holders, obviously, but they never come to the game. They always sell it to, there's always somebody new in my seat, in my, in my little area right there. So sitting next to me. So I was just saying, okay, well, maybe we can flip, you know, and he can go to two seats to the right and I can go two seats to the left and, and we will be all right. He'll never know the difference anyway. So, but now. Nah. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to double up and go uh, get two more tickets, get four more. Uh, no. <laughs> Yeah, considering where you sit, I can't imagine what that cost would be. But now there's actually a pair of seats beside me. They're linked to a suite. So mm -hmm. the suite gets two tickets mm -hmm. in the lower level. I mean, they better give you more than that if you're paying that much for a suite. But they never come to the game either. The people that have those seats always just go in the box. So I try to do the same thing. Say, well, just put them two seats someplace else. They're never there. Yeah. They don't actually go. And they can actually see if they get scanned. And they're not scanned half the time. But, you know, that's something maybe off air I got to talk to them about that's not recorded. But, yeah, man, it's – I knew I was going to renew, but there was really no rush on this end. And I am fired up about bien I, I did go back. And those of you that are wondering, Eric bien had his press conference today. If you're looking for it and you want to stream it, go to YouTube. We'll post a clip. The commander's feed was bad. I thought it was just my cell phone streaming it. Mm -hmm. And then if you're watching it on Twitter, you can see all the comments going through. They're just audio was bad on the YouTube and on Twitter. So WUSA 9 is our local station here in DC. They had their own feed. Audio was perfect. So some of our clips is from a mix of both of those. But everybody kept asking me, and I don't know how it is with you. When like I go on vacation and I'm down in Raleigh with a bunch of people from DC, you know, people are asking me about the commanders. I'm not sure if people kind of, you know, where you went out of town, people are still asking you the same questions. No, Come what they me. asked me was, was I a player? Because I believe in, <laughs> I believe in repping my gear. And so I had, I had my gear on and, and they were saying, uh, are you a player? And I said, uh, no, I'm not a player. And are you sure? You know, <laughs> you know. And so now nah, I'm not. A, so no, no one knew who I was where I was. So they wanted you to buy them drinks is basically what you're telling me because they thought you were making that NFL money. Hold on, brother. The drinks were included. Come on oh, now. Go, go, come on. Come on we got to talk about this offline because, yeah, mine were not included. And I spent – the only thing I got for free were cookies at the Doubletree Hilton I was staying in, and they were actually pretty damn good. 
the warm cookies that you get. Oh, when you check in, definitely. Oh, I had no idea about these things, man. Oh, what? This is told me, yeah, man. Every time I walked in and out back to the car, I got a cookie. It's not just when you checked in. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I just told him my hockey team just got her ass kicked. I drove six hours for this. Can I get a cookie? And they gave me two. It was good, was man. It, was it, what do you want, a cookie? <laughs> <laughs> and I got a bottle of water. Yeah, so. see, it's moving on up. Come on, but man. <laughs> walking around Raleigh, and you know, it actually it had happened at that point because the game was on Saturday mm -hmm. and they announced that the enemy was coming on board on Friday. And we you know we haven't recorded a show since then, but my last show, our last show, our last recording, my statement was zero chance the enemy comes here. Why would a man with his pedigree mm -hmm. and track record come to an organization with all of these questions? The mm -hmm. ownership question is up in the air. Rivera's job status is up in the air. He's got two years left on his deal. He's going into the last year coming up. So they technically call that a lame duck year next year because he's not under contract. Mm -hmm. Why would that guy come here after winning two Super Bowls in what, four years? I mean, it's just still doesn't make sense to me. And we've got clips of the press conference. But I want to hear Rally's perspective. Why do you think the enemy chose Washington over some of the other spots he could potentially could have gone to? Well, I think that, and, and obviously this is just my perspective and, and I've been right on some of them and I've been wrong on a lot of them, but uh, I think that in, in all honesty, Ted and our, and our listening uh, mashup that we have, uh, I think that it's in the title. He is the assistant head coach. And I don't know the last time that we've had an assistant head coach. And I always think that the devil was in the details. And for me, okay, I think that they kind of already know who the new owner is. I think that, that Rivera is going to bow out at some point and depending on how how eb does and eb's eric b enemy depending on how he does he's going to relinquish the team to him if he does well and that's how he's going to get his head coaching gig now i know during the presser he said hey i can't worry about that no i i, I understand that but that's what you have to say we don't really know what's going on behind the scenes, and that's what I believe. And it could be a far shot, but I believe that there are some guarantees that are that are involved here, and um, uh, that that's just my my rationale, my thinking. And I can see why a lot of times. They said in the interview that he didn't do well. And, and I'm not saying he didn't do well, but he kept repeating himself. And yeah. a, lot of a lot of times, owners don't want to hear the repetitive. They want new ideas, and he continued to repeat himself. So that may have been a reason why they didn't decide to step out there. Who knows? But that's just what I heard. And, and I know that if I was... In the, on the hot seat and you continue to kind of give me the same question that I would maybe try to wrap it up the same way that he did uh, with the same type of, of answers. So, but, but he said, he said, I, I forgot the term, but he said it like six times. And, and I was like, wow, I mean, there's not a better way to say it or another way to say it. So um, that was the only flaw. Yeah. If, if you want to call it a flaw, that was the only thing that I saw. Could have been the commander's audio cutting in and out. But no, I hear you. There was some people say he doesn't interview well. Why did he get passed up for being a head coach 15 times? You know, mm -hmm. there's a lot going into that with mm -hmm. the Rooney rule. Was he even really a candidate? Did they just bring him in to satisfy that rule? And for those of our listeners that don't know, it mandates that an NFL franchise has to interview a minority candidate before they can actually hire somebody. So there's thoughts in the past that, he was just the checkbox mm -hmm. to interview that minority candidate. And who knows if that was true or not. Only those owners that pass on him know that. And I'm going to disagree with you a little bit of they know about who ownership is going to be or what's going on because it's come out that 
you know, a couple of people have toured the facility publicly, and a couple of people privately have toured the commander's facility in Ashburn. I've had a meeting with the team since our last show, got to go out there. There are some things that are happening where, you know, I can't say everything out loud. I'll tell you when the lights are off and the recording's done, but I don't think that they are close to knowing who the final person is going to be at this point because the bids are not where Snyder wants them. There are several bids and several of them are less than $6 billion. Mm -hmm. The highest bid is 6.3. And I don't think he's going to sell this thing unless he gets to seven at least. And the reason why some of those bids were less than six was because when people toured the facilities and the stadium, they're understanding how much money they've got to throw in and invest into a new stadium, what that's going to cost. They're meeting with state people to try and understand what it would be and if they're going to get anything to help build a stadium. So the actual money is lower than Snyder wants. On top of that, whoever buys the team can do whatever the hell they want to. They don't have to keep Rivera around. This is another reason why I didn't think Banami was going to come here. They could take ownership of this team end of March, right before the NFL draft, and fire everybody. We already heard Sean Payton come out and say that he had talked to a potential owner asking him if he would coach the commanders, if he bought the team. Sean Payton came out and said that during the Super Bowl. So that's happening. But if Rivera steps down, then is that his choice to promote the enemy? No, it's the owner's choice to do it. And if Rivera gets fired, you would think Rivera gets fired because the team doesn't do well. So if well, the I'm team doesn't looking, do well, shoot. I'm just looking at the natural progression of the title. Yeah. You know, you, yeah. you have captain and you have co-pilot. And if the, if the captain goes down, then the co-pilot takes over. And, and so that's the only reason why I'm looking at, at that aspect of things. Like I said, I didn't say I was right. Oh, you, yeah, you, no, you, no, you, I hear you. Yeah. But you're not so, the only so, person that said that. So, yeah. you know, a lot of fans have been calling in to the talk radio stations and saying that on social media. And to me, if Rivera gets fired, then naturally the enemy takes over. But the I don't think he's going to get fired. I don't think he's going to get fired. I think I think that he's going to figure out a way to step down, whether it's a this. This is just my own conspiracy theory, if you want to call it. Yeah whether whether it's a, a fake sickness or it's something i think i think that he's had enough i, I really do oh i've and, had enough I, of him but yeah uh, oh, <laughs> so so i mean he, he i think i think he's ready to take his vacation you know what i mean so uh i i i just feel that it's already in the cards and that we are just trying to play catch up like we always are and they figured this thing out to a degree to a degree yeah. and that that's just me and he's still under contract for another year after this. I don't think he's going to live out that contract. I think yeah. Yeah. that the new owner is going to bring in their own people. But the enemy, I think, has a two-year deal that is linked to Rivera's contract. So to me, that makes sense. And so this is the press release mm -hmm. from the commanders. Welcome, Eric the enemy, assistant head coach and offensive coordinator. Yeah, that speaks volumes, so, bro. I'm telling you, yeah. that assistant head coach, Speaks about when was the last time we had we had an assistant head coach? I wonder if Greg Williams was the assistant head coach for Joe Gibbs. I, I can't remember, but I want to say he might have been, but I could be wrong. And he's actually the defensive head coach for the commanders, not the commanders, sorry, the defenders the now. Defenders, that's right. So I do want to go check out a defenders game. You and I got to get out there for one of these games. Definitely. But I want to pull that up and see if he was just a defensive coordinator or assistant. But, I mean, to me, the thing is, looking down the list, the Ravens hired Todd Munkin to replace Greg Roman. Munkin was a 34-year coaching vet. He was with the Bucks. He was with the Browns. He was with the Jaguars. But more recently, he was at the University of Georgia's offensive coordinator and quarterbacks coach. So you mean to tell me you're going to take a guy that was at the University of Georgia QB coach and OC for three years over, you know, Eric Bieniemy, the Buffalo Bills, Ken Dorsey. He's now their offensive coordinator. Ken Dorsey was the Bills passing game coordinator in 2021. So it's just, I don't get why these teams, the Bengals, 
you know, they brought in Brian Callahan, who was a QB coach for the Lions and the Raiders. Why they chose to go with guys that have a lesser resume versus a guy like an Eric Bieniemy. So that's the part that didn't really make a ton of sense to me. And during the press conference, John Keim asked him, more importantly, the enemy, why Washington? And this is what he had to say. And why Washington? What appealed to you? Um, what appealed about this job to you? Why not Washington? Look at all the talent. Look at the players that they have. Okay? Look at the guys that they, they, they have on defense. So I'm excited about this opportunity. I've known Coach Ron now since 1999. So relationships mean something. I've known Coach Mayhew for a number of years. And that means something. I've known Mr. Stokes for a number of years. And so I have no doubt about what they're building here. Obviously, they went to the playoffs uh, in the previous year. So they were basically real close this year of going. So I'm never, I have never, ever backed down from a challenge. So I'm embracing this challenge. I'm fired up. I'm excited. I'm excited when it's time to start talking ball with these guys, to start getting to work. But when it's all said and done with, why not Washington? So he's looking for a challenge. He's excited about the challenge. Well, he's got one here. He found it. <laughs> From an offensive perspective, I mean, we were a mess last year. And I think, you know, we talked about that. Part of that was Scott Turner. Part of that's the players he has on the roster. And I am excited about Eric Bieniemy coming here. I criticize these guys time and time again, but mm -hmm. I want to give them credit when they got it right. And they got yeah. it right by bringing yeah. the enemy here. The, the question that I have is who, with you being the OC and the assistant head coach, who is in charge of player personnel? Hasn't changed. Okay. So, so, so does that mean that he's going to be in charge of, of player personnel? No, it's we still Rivera. Who, well, see, and that's where I have an issue. That's why I have an issue. I mean, I understand he's the head coach, but if if I'm the assistant head coach and I'm the OC and you're running my offense, then I want to be able to pick, obviously, with the collaboration of the head coach, but I want to be the one to say, no, I, I don't want that guard hypothetically from Tulsa. I, yeah. I want the I want the guard from Oklahoma. I mean, from from Texas or whatever have you. You know, so I'm, I'm wondering does he have that type of say? And if he does, then I really will be all in because only he knows how his offense needs to look and what he, and, and truthfully what, what the people that he needs. So that's the issue that I have. And, and I'm with you though, Ted, they got it right. And right now I'm going to praise them for getting it right. But that's, yeah. that's the question that I have. If I was one of the reporters, I would have asked that question. And that, that was old Bill Parcells. You got to let me buy the groceries if I'm responsible for the meal back in the day. But from a player personnel perspective, Martin Mayhew is a general manager. Marty Herney is the executive vice president of football slash player personnel. And they both report to Ron Rivera. So if there is a split decision, Rivera is a tiebreaker. Now, that to me is the other side of the coin here. I am happy. I am ecstatic that the enemy is here because looking at the other options that we had, Ken Zambezi, Pat Shermer, and not knocking those gentlemen, but just looking at the resume, you take the names off the top of the piece of paper and you look at the accolades. You cannot compete with the stuff that the enemy has done in the mm -hmm. 10 years that he has been with the chiefs. There's just, mm -hmm. there's no arguing that. Right. So I am happy that it's him. The thing is we don't have Patrick Mahomes. Sam Howell is an unknown. We don't have Travis Kelsey. You know, Logan Thomas has not been healthy for two seasons in a row. Cole Turner is an unknown because he wasn't healthy last year. And John Bates, you cannot even compare him to a Travis Kelsey. I'm sorry, Travis Kelsey would be one of the best tight ends, if not the best tight end in the NFL. So oh, yeah. future Hall the, of Famer. This goes back to what are we going to do to fix this and how are we going to run the enemy's offense? And this was actually a question that they asked the enemy with his thoughts on the roster. And this was Eric's response. 
Hey, Eric, Pete Haley with NBC. You keep referencing a lot of the players who are here. Just what are some of your general thoughts about the roster and the talent that's available to you now? Well, I, personally, I have a, a lot of thoughts. And I can sit here and point out all the great things that some of these guys have done throughout their career. But that's not important right now. What's important is this. I got to evaluate every player on this roster, and I haven't had an opportunity to do that. Okay? A lot of these guys I've talked to at the Combine, I've followed their careers, and obviously we've played against each other, so I've had an opportunity to watch some of these guys play. So obviously there's some talent here, but I'm going to work, do my job with, with Mr. Mayhew on top of that, with Coach uh, Rivera, Marty Herney, and Stokes, just making sure that we're doing the right things and making sure that we're evaluating and doing what is right for the organization, for the team moving forward. The key word in that quote from him is evaluation. Mm -hmm. So he's going to go through, he's going to look at this roster. He hasn't had a chance to do it. And right. he's going to see, does he have the right players to actually execute the offense that he wants? I'm not saying he's bringing the Kansas city offense here. And it reminds me of stories about coach Gibbs. Coach Gibbs came here and wanted to run the Don Coryell offense. And we lost what five games in a row at that point and they realized that the players on this roster cannot execute that no. offense right. and he completely shifted went to a smash mouth football style and it fit and the rest is history mm -hmm. to me if the enemy is going to look at it that way then i am good none of this two to one run pass it's what can you actually pull off with the players you have on this team and then also what can Marty and Martin and Ron realistically view from a player perspective, knowing that this team is in a budget and that's their definition during this off season. I don't like the word budget. Oh, I don't either. Because when it, I think of, when I think of budget, I think of like budget hotel, <laughs> you know, I'm saying, you know, I'd rather stay at a Marriott than you know than than a comfort in or something like that i mean i just not no knock on comfort in i don't i want the people for comfort in coming at me but you know the fact that the matter is there are different levels and so yeah. if, if you're really trying to rebuild and, and i know if and i know money is always an object but you know we've got to be able to maximize our potential of what we have and um I, we always hear that there are some uh, little nuggets deep in the draft, and and I'm I'm really hoping that we can find that so that we can truly provide a spark for our offense because that's what's needed. Yeah, and looking at some stats here, Eric Bieniemy had them throwing the ball 62 percent of the time. Now, some of this just could be because of the people they had on their team. With oh, the Kansas yeah. City Chiefs. Personnel, definitely. On first and 10, they actually passed the ball third most in the NFL. So I heard a quote that the enemy had with someone basically talking about using the run to close the game out. And to me, that's fine. You grind that out at that point. But to just have that Encino Ron just mindset of, no, this is the NFL. We run the ball, blah, blah, blah. That to me is not how it's done. It just depends on situations and the game favors throwing the ball, but realistically mm -hmm. it's about what do you have that can complement your players. And I have faith that the enemy can come up with that. The thing is there was a TV show that I turned down. Right. And I told you this when we first started recording the podcast, because I was going to have to be in London for an entire month and I was going to miss the first part of the commander season, it's our inaugural season, said, I, I can't do this. There's no way in the world I'm going to miss the first commander's game ever. TV show and $100,000 be damned, whatever. We all saw how that turned out. Probably should have gone to the TV show. But the premise of that show is you have different chefs and each of them gets ingredients. And one of the ingredients could be like Wagyu steak, $100 a pound. And the other one could just be ground chuck. Right. You know, you don't know what you're going to get. It's all going to be a mystery, but it's your job to make the best thing you can with those ingredients. And to me, that's what the enemy's job is here. We all know what kind of ingredients he's going to get when it comes down to it. 
And mm -hmm. we judge him based on that. So during that show, and I watched a couple of the episodes, it's like, they're like, oh man, you turn this Wagyu into something great, but it's Wagyu, it's supposed to be good. Oh man, you turn this ground chuck into something phenomenal, I cannot recognize it. That to me is what I want to see from Eric Bieniemy. I want to mm -hmm. see him do magic with this roster with some mm -hmm. of the holes that we have. And can he actually do that? Can he pull that off? You want you want to see him turn water into wine. Come on, Ted. Hey, man. I mean, <laughs> if, if he can do it, he can do it. But this was actually the enemy's response for his vision for the new commander's offense. Just Nikki Jabala, first of all, for the, with the Washington Post. Generally, what is your vision for this offense? My vision is this. I just want to make sure that these guys understand that there's a way in which I know how to do it. But on top of that, I got to make sure that I, I'm putting these guys in the best situation to be the most explosive, the most dynamic, and also, more importantly, giving us the best opportunity to be successful. So that's one thing, okay? But when it's all said and done with, we're going to do this. We're going to play hard. We're going to play fast. We're going to have a sense of urgency and a sense of purpose in everything that we do. And that's where it starts, okay? And it's all about being accountable as well understanding the fact that indirectly we all impact each other's lives. So it's my job to make sure I'm doing what is right by them. But on top of that, they got to make sure that they're doing right by each other. So my envision right now is making sure that that process take care of itself. The X's and O's will take care of itself. These guys, they know football. Okay. They understand football. These guys are professional players for a reason. Okay. Now, only thing that's going to change, the verbiage may change. You know, some of the route concepts, uh, the way we term them may change. But when it's all said and done with, it's football. And if we love what we do, we'll have the success that we need to have. Long as we're investing in, the, in it the right way. I'm excited because the enemy's a hard ass. He was a former player. He's been through every piece of this game. And I don't know about you, but in my job, I've had managers tell me what to do but they've never actually worn my shoes before. They've never actually done the job. So how can you tell me how to do the job if you technically don't know what the job consists of? And sorry, Scott Turner didn't play football. He grew up around football players because his dad was a coach, but he did not play football. You know, Jeff Scanina, Coach Z, you know, the defensive line coach for the commanders, Ryan Kerrigan, those guys played the game. Is it a oh, shock yeah. that our defensive line had its best year this year when those two guys took over? I don't think so. Well, we are the DMV mess hall with a military theme. And based upon that, from being a butterball, slickly private up to becoming a sergeant, you know, the sergeant has done everything that that butterball private is making his way through the ranks to be able to do. So when he can pinpoint and see, hey, I've made that mistake, so don't do it, you know, that's what the enemy basically is doing. Yeah. He has, he, he's, like you said, he's pretty much done everything, every step of the job that needs to be done, and he can see it. He knows if you're a slacker. He knows because, let's face it, man, we know what to look for. And even as fans, we can see it. So, but we have, we, we're, we are at a distance. This guy is going to be right there on top of it. And if it takes them being a hard ass to get us in check, then so be it. If you remember when Rivera first came in, he got rid of all the little fancy uh, ping pong the foosball tables. Table. And, yeah, yeah, he, he, got, he got rid of all that stuff. And, and, and in the military, and basic training, they, you know, right now that, you know, even when I, when I was in, you know, back then it was uh, Walkmans and, and things of that nature. Right. So you couldn't, but that, but they were glued to your hip, like phones are, but they had, you, once you went in, all that stuff had to go away. But after a certain point of time and you showed your competence, that stuff slowly started to come back to you. So that's what this reminds me of. He's going to have to strip all that nonsense away from these guys and build them into what – and mold them into what he sees fit. And everybody's not going to like it. 
You know, no, some, they're, they're, gonna, they're gonna be they're gonna be some guys who who take and and run with it, where there's other guys who are gonna push back. And I'm sure that he, his style of coaching, he knows what to do when someone pushes back, as well as when someone uh, accepts it. So, like you, I am really ready for this thing to, to get started, man. And we've got a long way to go. <laughs> and it's I, February, and I, man. And I, and, I, and I hate that, man. I hate that we got a long way to go, but, but I'm excited, man. I am too. And, you know, the team's giving us content so we don't got to sit there and, you know, make some stuff up. But it's, it's just, it's nice to see because I don't think we're making a big flashy off-season move. I don't think that they can afford to do that because of the budget that they put themselves under. But while we've been doing the podcast, a news article just came out from Nikki Javala, Mark Maskey, and Liz Clark from the Washington Post. Jeff Bezos hires investment firm to consider bid on commanders. So Bezos just <laughs> hired Allen and Company, a New York-based firm that is prominent in transactions involving pro professional sports franchises, according to those people. And Bezos is basically trying to, He's getting them to look into buying the team. So this is Jeff's official shot at throwing his hat in the ring. And yeah. Yeah. I hope well, it doesn't that... happen. I, I really hope it's not Bezos. Jeff, if you're hearing this, I take it back. I'm lying. But I was hearing rumors, and there were a couple of articles that came out that Roger Goodell and the other NFL owners were talking about lowering their self-imposed rules. And one of the rules that's a problem is the majority owner has to come up with 40% of the money, which limits minorities from buying the team. Mm -hmm. And they were trying to see maybe if they drop that threshold, you get a bigger pool of applicants because you're not limiting who can actually throw the money down. As long as you get the money, who cares how you get it? How you get it, yeah. So guys like Byron Allen and other potential minority owners I would like to see them get a chance. But now that Jeff has hired these guys, I think that chance is pretty much done. And if he wants it, I think it could potentially be his if he comes with a proper enough bid. Because if Bezos comes in at seven and Josh Allen comes in at 6.3, I can see Snyder giving it to Allen saying, screw the 700,000 or you know, whatever dollars yeah. at that point. I'm just going to go with him because he ain't Jeff Bezos. But it is interesting. So, in other words, Bezos was doing just like I was on eBay back in the day. Like I said, <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Like he I definitely said, was. He was. He was hawking. He he was hawking, waiting to see. Okay, well, what do we got going on here? Oh, oh, that's all you guys are gonna put up. All right, no problem. Let me go ahead and hire this firm and see what everybody else is talking about, so I can go ahead and lay down this big joker over the little joker and by this team. <laughs> but I was actually curious, and this was a question that came up, how involved was Dan Snyder or Tanya Snyder in Eric Bieniemy's hiring process? And this is what Bieniemy had to say. Michael Phillips from Richmond. Um, did you have a chance to talk to ownership during this process? And did you get any questions answered about the sale process and how that impacts things? So Coach Rivera was the lead uh, person in this hiring process, obviously. I've had an opportunity to spend time with Mr. Wright and uh, Mr. Mayhew, just like I said. But when it's all said and done with, with all that stuff, that's none. That's not my job uh, title, okay? Those guys will take care of that. So it doesn't sound like Dan and Tanya were involved at all with the hiring of Eric Bieniemy, And I'm not surprised because Ron is in charge of football and everything on that side. So it sounds like they just let him deal with it. And I'm guessing they, I mean, they've got to sign the paycheck, you know, at the other side of that contract, when you're signing, it's got to say Snyder on the other end, you would think, because that's who's ultimately paying him. But are you shocked to hear that they didn't send the private jet with them hanging out on top of it? And, you know, we're just kind of waiting to meet them. I don't believe they didn't meet them, but see, if you, if you, depending on how you answer that question, then you open the door for other questions that, you know, and other speculation. So I, I feel, and once again, this is just rally captain. I feel that, that at some point in time, he did talk to him and, 
uh, that something was said. Now, how much? I don't know, but um, I, I think that uh, to a degree there was something that was said, I'm sure. So I'll leave it at that. But as far as this press conference is concerned, no, I, I didn't have anything to say because that closes the door. Well, you, you have no follow-up questions behind that. If you say, yes, I did talk to him. Well, was he invested in you? How did you, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to get into all that. So yeah. no, I did not. But I guarantee you that I'm sure that there were some words that were spoke, spoken. Excuse so, me. RG3 came out and said that Eric Bieniemy should only leave Kansas City for a head coaching opportunity. Miss me with that got to prove himself narrative. 15 of the 21 head coaches hired in the last three years were first time head coaches. The enemy has proven himself more than every single one of them. Mm -hmm. And he obviously came here and he's not a head coach. Now, John Kime asked him, is this a step to becoming a head coach? And this is what the enemy had to say. And did you feel like if you wanted to elevate to being a head coach one day that you had to make this kind of a move to kind of get your put your own full stamp on on an office? Being a head coach right now is not in my in my thought process. Right now, here's what I'm focused on. I'm focusing on being the best coach that I can be today, okay? The rest of everything else will take care of itself starting tomorrow. I live in the moment, okay? So I got to be implanted, and Nikki know exactly what I'm about to say. I got to be where my feet are. So right now, my feet are planted right here. So hearing that he's not focused on that, hearing that he's not focused on, because some people are saying, hey, if BME does a good job, he'll be gone next year. From my standpoint, if he does a good job and he's gone next year, I don't care. That means we had a good season, and I'm happy with it, and maybe they bring someone else up. Because Biennemi, you would think, is going to bring some of his own guys here. We've lost a couple of coaches mm -hmm. since we've had a show because those guys got jobs elsewhere. And we'll maybe talk about that in a future pod. I'm more worried about losing our defensive backs coach because that guy has developed some young talent on our team that are – low round draft picks, late round draft picks into heck of players. But if the enemy does leave after this season, really doesn't matter to me. That means we did well and he did what we need to do and he proved it. And hopefully he eventually does get that job that I think he deserves that a lot of other people out there think he deserves. But right now let's use him for what we can and let's get him to fix this offense. Or I'll say that he may, if he's gone, maybe he didn't do what they thought he'd be able to do. So I mean, there, there's always the glass half empty or half full aspect of things. But I, but uh, I, I, Ted, man. So, well, I'm I'm, I'm gonna leave it alone. I, of course, his prior to him coming here, he wanted to be a head coach. Yeah, make no bones about it. But that didn't happen. So naturally, yeah, I, I got to forget about that. And now I'm focused on this. I still have assistant head coach in my title. So I'm not where I need to be just yet, but I'm still climbing and striving to become what I want. And I've, I've taken a step closer. So I'm good with that. Now, do we know how much money they paid him? I haven't seen his contract details, but I, he wasn't under contract with Kansas City anymore. His contract was done. Right, right. So he was able to go anywhere he wanted to. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have joined different shows in the area saying that if the enemy didn't get the commander's job or didn't find a job, Andy Reid would just take him back as the OC. And I believe so, that. So, yeah, I, I do too. I don't think Andy Reid's going to leave one of his guys out in the lurch. But I don't think I have seen his actual contract out there yet. Mm -hmm. And I'm not not sure. I know which contracts are out there, but I'm curious actually if we'll see what a assistant head coach's contract comes down to. Because I know they had to throw him some guap. I know they did, brother. Because oh, if yeah. it was me, if it was me, you know, in order to 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 you know unseed me from from a Super Bowl winning team, you gotta you gotta throw me some guap, and you gotta give me a title, which they did. So, bro, everything right now. As our old Bruce Allen would say, we're winning off the field. So right, yeah. right, right now we are. Damn winning man, off. why'd you have to use that one? <laughs> we are because hey, we haven't won on the it, field. It is. We're we're winning off the field. 
let's hopefully put it together in six months from now and hey see where this thing goes man let's roll the dice bro let's kick the tires and light the fires I, i'm ready yeah and the coaching contracts are not disclosed so okay. i i mean unless a leak comes out we don't know and i don't think we're going to know how much bnb got paid but it's a two-year deal which matches up with rivera being here and they still have to pay scott turner so yeah you know scott turner is getting paid someplace else the enemy's here now they're paying him and I think part of that is also because they're not going to be making a bunch of moves player wise in the off season. I mean, they can officially franchise tag Deron Payne now and Ben standing came out a couple of days ago and said that he heard that they were going to do it. And if they were going to do it, I think they're going to do it after the B enemy piece. Cause I don't think they wanted to steal any of that thunder because we knew B enemy was going to be here on Friday. Right. Mm -hmm. It is now Thursday. So it wouldn't surprise me if they do the whole Deron Payne thing, you know, next week with a new news cycle. When does, yeah, when does that window close? For tag? I don't think it closes till May. Yeah, oh, because wow. they can franchise tag them and then they can still continue to negotiate and they can take the franchise tag away. Mm -hmm. So it just all depends. And I wanted to talk to you about that, but we'll make that for a show next week, the different okay. franchise tag options, whether it's exclusive, whether it's transactional franchise tag, exactly. just the different yeah. ones and what happens with that. But you know, from a B enemy standpoint, this was a message that he had for the fans. I think another group, we're just real quick, uh, ready to embrace the journey are, are the fans. Do you do you have a message for the fans who are like um, probably very excited to have a Super Bowl champ coming to town? <laughs> well, I'll just say this. I think it's Hail Commanders. Is that right? Maybe I ain't say that with enough uh, enthusiasm. Hail Commanders, right? And I normally would say it in a different term, but we got to make sure we get a little bit more comfortable. Uh, <laughs> with each other throughout the course of the year. But like I said, I'm fired up. The fans should be fired up about this. And the only thing I ask, just be patient. Mm -hmm. Nothing happens overnight. We're going to build it. And like I said, the important thing is making sure that we're doing it the right way. It's going to be hard. It's going to be a, a hard challenge. And anything in life, if you want to be the best, it has to be hard. Okay? And it doesn't have to always be perfect. At the end of the day, if you learn the strain and if it's important to you, you'll find a way to get it done, all right? But that's what this process is going to be about. And it starts in, with OTAs in phase one. It starts in OTAs in phase two. It starts in OTAs with phase three. Then it goes to that vet mini camp, all right? And then on top of that, we get some time off. Then we go to training camp, all right? And training camp is that time when we start building together, with all the blood, sweat, and tears that we're going to share, we're going to have good days. We're going to have bad days. There's going to be some days Jack Del Rio and his defense, they're going to beat up on us, okay? The only thing I want to know is how we're going to respond, okay, and handle the adversity when presented with that. That's how you measure good teams, and that's what this is about. Like I said, I'm ready to embrace this journey. I'm fired up. I'm excited about this moment, and like I said, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it too. And it's just potential is a hell of a thing. It can get you fired or it can get you promoted. Mm -hmm. And we got a lot of potential at our skill positions on this team with Terry and Jahan and Curtis and Brian Robinson and AG. But we also got a lot of questions and those questions have still not been answered. And we'll hopefully get those addresses a fan base during this off season but hearing him say that it's not going to happen overnight makes me feel a little bit better. I just don't know if the enemy realizes that he doesn't have that much time to fix this thing. Yeah. You know, another reason why we are the way that we are is because our fan base, we're thirsty. Oh, yeah. And our, and, and our, our thirst has not been quenched. And we keep looking at any little thing that we're, we're like a person walking through the desert without water and our mind is playing tricks on us on any little thing of an oasis so when something pops up we're ready to to, to, to jump on it and so and and right now this is 
the the next biggest thing. Oh, an oasis is in sight. So we're ready to jump on it because there may be some water here that we need to drink. So I'm 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 really hoping that, like you said, that he can get it done. But he's on the clock, <laughs> and, and that clock is ticking fast, bro. That's the thing about it. So that's why I said, you know, as far as player personnel with the style of offense that he wants to run, because technically only he knows the style of offense that he wants to run, and he knows what football players he needs to run that offense. Yeah. So, and I, and I, and I, and I, and I, I go back to this because if I know I need hypothetically a speed guard, don't give me some 500 pound dude who, who that's not going to help my offense. Are you trying to sabotage me? This is what I need. You know what I mean? So that's, that that's what I'm hoping that he has, uh, uh, he has the the right to be able to say, no, you know, I need this guy, not that guy. Give me this guy. So that's what I'm hoping, man. And, and I think that if he can get the people that he needs and they can truly mesh with that playbook, I think that we'll be all right. But we don't, need any, well, we don't need any opposition from the people. Well, my title is this and, I, and I'm the player personnel. You know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, no, I, I hear I'm, you. Because it's, you know, can, but on top does he get to run his actual offense or is Rivera yeah. going to come in? Cause there were times last year when Rivera came and told Scott Turner, we got to run the ball more, you know, or is he going to actually let the enemy own a hundred percent of it? Cause Ron is still the boss. He is. So, you know, there, there's a lot of questions that I have, but we are in the best position that we possibly can be right now, short mm -hmm. of an ownership change, you know, Eric B enemy, is putting us on a path to winning versus someone like a Pat Shermer or a Zampezi or a couple of old retreads coming in here, Greg Roman, maybe from the Ravens. You know, I am more excited because this guy knows what he's doing. And he's also not afraid to go at his players. I mean, he and Patrick Mahomes publicly got into arguments and the enemy didn't back down. I mean, you're the player, I'm the coach. He sat yeah. LaShawn McCoy. LaShawn McCoy is on a media tour bashing the hell out of Biennemi right now mm -hmm. because Biennemi sat LaShawn McCoy, but he did what was right for the team. And something that has driven me crazy about Washington teams of the past, I don't feel that they put the best 11 on the field. They let draft pick and compensation come into that. I feel that if Eric Bieniemy would have told Ron Rivera in that Cleveland Browns game, there is no way in hell Carson Wentz can run this offense and you leave in Taylor Heineke, I believe that he would have let him do that because Bieniemy has built up enough clout to tell Rivera no. Mm -hmm. Scott Turner hadn't built a damn thing and he hadn't right. earned that respect. Bieniemy can push back on Rivera and say no. Carson Wentz is garbage and should not play football here and can't run my offense, and we probably would have won that Browns game with Heineke. Or the enemy would have gone to Rivera and said, Wentz can't do crap. Yes, it was a 99-yard drive at the end of the first half, but we ran the ball two-thirds of the way. I need someone that can actually run my offense. And that, to me, is what I'm excited about. That's not why I renew my season tickets, but it's why I'm excited right now that there is a little light at the end of this just dark, miserable off-season tunnel. And it, it makes everyone happy. It, it, it makes the newspapers happy. It makes the, the media happy, the DC media happy. It, it makes the fans happy. It, it makes everyone happy, man. So right now we're all spun up and nothing is going to bring us down right now. Nah, and, not gonna let it, not gonna let us Come off this high right now, man. I'm going to ride this no, thing as long right. as I can. Yeah, that's right. I'm still, I'm still happy that we beat Dallas. So, you know, <laughs> I'm not letting that go. And I'm not, I give them the business every time I see them. And I still tell them, you guys still fell short of the goal, which the goal is going to the Super Bowl. I don't care if you went two games past us or four games past us. I don't care about that. The goal is going to the Super Bowl and winning the Super Bowl. And if you didn't win it, then you lost. So hush all that up. That's all that matters. Now they got a worse draft pick than us, and we're all starting from scratch. There it is. But welcome to DC, Eric Bianami. 
I yes, can't sir. wait Welcome. to see you out at OTAs, out at minicamp, hanging out there at the command center in Ashburn. This, this is going to be a fun ride this offseason, and I'm actually looking forward to it, man. Well, Eric, here's the thing, brother. Because you're new, there's something that you got to do for the captain. Anyone new has got to put on the rally chain. You probably won't. <laughs> you probably won't. But I'm throwing it out there. All right. So <laughs> welcome, though, Eric, on a serious tip. Welcome, brother. We, we, we're we looking forward to, to seeing your your wonders and your play calling and your recruitment and the whole nine yards to, to, to bring and put Washington back on the map. As I always say, you could have be anywhere in the world listening and you decided to tune in with us and join us, and I greatly appreciate it. We will see you guys next week for the DMV Mess Hall. Rally Captain, Tailgate Ted, for another Welcome Back episode. We're out. Welcome to DMV.